uh, let's start with the asset browser. So there's here now a new shortcut, which is the quick asset browser. I will explain the difference in a minute. But um, it opens this, this window. And so this is basically a, a typical file browser. There's nothing too fancy about it. It's not meant to be too complicated. It's, it's very simple. So um, this is the, the folder, the root folder, where you have all your assets. And this is everything that's in this window. And uh, this is used to browse the assets uh, in, uh, as you can already do with the, the file browsers, I guess. But uh, this one shows a little bit of a different view. So let me try to show you something. OK, so for example, here, you don't see the files that are on disk. You only see a, a texture. Maybe I can show the same one. Oh, no, maybe not that one. Demo. OK, this is the assets that we created for the demo. So that's going to be easier. So. Um, I have here a folder with Cryball, and here I have a mesh and a material. I also have a preview here. I will show you all the all the functionality of this window later, but I kind of want to show you first how this corresponds to what you have on disk. So you see here we have the CGF. CGF is the mesh, as you're, you're used to that, and the material is the material. But we also have some cryasset files here. And the cryasset files are the, the first thing that you will see that has changed for now. Um, OK, but basically, um, the difference here between files and assets is that assets is more of a concept. Um, and an asset could represent multiple files. For example, if you have a, a mesh with several lots, it's only going to show one asset in the asset browser, because that is really only one concept that you're manipulating. It's only one mesh. If you change this mesh, it's going to change all these lots at the same time. Really, all these files belong to the same uh, unit of work, if you want. So. Um, but OK, in this example, sorry. In this example, um, this mesh is quite easy. It doesn't have a lot. So the only difference that you're going to see is the cryasset file. And the FBM here is, um, and Christian is going to show this in a little bit, is just uh, media that came with the FBX. So we're using the FBX pipeline for all of this demo, but this should also work with the exporters um, that you're using today. So that should be no problem. All right, so let's go back to the asset browser a little bit, and I can show you all of its features. So right now, this looks like a pretty basic um, file browser. If I, s if I um, go to the root, I see all the, the folders, and I can go into objects, and for example, I don't know, natural, and trees, and the aspen trees, and now I can see all the trees. And if I click on them, I can uh, preview them here. So this looks very much like um, the current file browsers that you have. Uh, let's see, some other things you can do here. Um, so you can also decide to show or hide the preview. You can also decide to show or hide the folders, and I will show you why that can be nice. And um, you can also, for example, uh, select multiple folders here, and you will see all the content of all, all these folders here. So it's, it's, it's pretty powerful. I mean, it remembers the history. For example, here I can click Objects. It goes back to Objects. And you know it remembers everything that I did. So as you play around with this, you'll hopefully find this pretty natural. Um, again, here I can search folders. For example, Objects. And I will find everything that has objects in it. Um, so that's pretty uh, obvious. Here is a little bit more advanced search. So let me show you again. If I'm here and I'm pointing to the uh, root of the assets and I search something, um, I'm going to be able to see all the assets that are inside this. So here, if I type tree, it's not going to show me all the trees that are in this folder, but it's actually going to show me all the trees that are in all the subfolders that I've selected here. So if then I select, I don't know, particles, well, there is actually no tree inside particles. But if I go back here, I see all the trees of the entire project. So this is pretty nice. And I can go a little bit further, um, because this uh, search bar here is pretty smart. And I can say tree uh, mesh. And now I'm only going to see the meshes. Or I can do tree texture. And I'm only going to see the textures. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do with this. And, and you should experiment with this search bar a little bit. But um, to make long story short, it will be able to search not only in the name column, but in all the other columns that you will be able to see here. So you can make quite complex searches just with this search bar. 
Okay. We also have these filters. Um, these filters, they're the same as you will find in other windows of the sandbox. We're gonna have these filters a bit everywhere, so it's, it's very important that you guys um, yeah, understand how this works. Um, we also have this in the level explorer here for those that haven't used the, um, let me open a level first. For those that haven't used the sandbox, uh, the level explorer is the, the layers and objects kind of selection. And here you can do the same thing. You can filter and, and see, um, yeah, different, different uh, views and different filtering options of the objects. So if I go back to my IC browser, I can do exactly the same here. So let's add a filter and let's say, I just want to see um, meshes, okay. So now this is another way for me to see only meshes. And here, if I search for tree now, I will also only see the tree meshes. Right? There's also another interesting feature that we're gonna try to uh, popularize in all the different windows of the sandbox, which is the favorites. So if, let's say, um, this tree is, something that I use a lot, I can just click here and it's going to be saved as one of my favorite uh, meshes. And then if I click here, then um, I see the ones that I have favorited, right? So if I, if I do more favorites um, and I click here, I should be able to see them. This is nice if you're working with the same types of assets all the time or same assets all the time. You can just set them as favorite and then you're able to find them uh, very fast again. So let's say I want to place this house. Uh, now I don't have to go through the create objects anymore. I can just place it from here. Um, so everything works the same way as it would work here in the create objects. So finally, uh, one last thing I wanted to say, or maybe I should have said this first, but where do you get the asset browser? Obviously, you can get it from here, and there is a little shortcut, it's F2. Um, F2 should be your main go-to shortcut. Whenever you want to find something, you just press F2 and type, right? You're already there. And when you press F2 again, it hides it. So it's really practical, you can press F2, find your mesh, drag and drop it, press F2 again, it's gone of your way. However, maybe this is not how you want to work. You can also create as many as you want as a browsers from here. I can create one, and these ones I can put in my layout. For example, I probably want it here. And when I'm in this mode, oh, sorry. Uh, when basically you don't have a lot of space for this, um, you might want to change how this thing looks. So there are different views. Uh, this is kind of the default view, how it shows right now. But this is how I personally like to use it. I don't really like to see the folders because they're not very interesting to me. I just want to search for an asset. And I also don't want to see this. I want to see just a big list. So there are different views. There's what I call the recursive view. And the recursive view is going to be this, which is essentially a list of all the assets in my project. Because really, personally, that's all I need. So. And I also don't like the preview because I'm not really a level designer. So this is kind of how I use it. But uh, the interesting part of this is that you can configure this as you want. It will remember what you like. So again, you can have folders. You can have preview. You can have recursive view. And if you don't have recursive view, you have the option to have recursive search. Recursive search means when I type something here. So again, if I type mesh, now I have a recursive view. So it's going to show me all the meshes inside all, all the subfolders of this. This is what recursive search is. If I don't have this, so let's disable the recursive search, and I search for mesh, I'm going to see nothing because there are no meshes here. But if I go, you know, if I go, let's say, here, now I'm going to see some meshes. So this is what the recursive search is. Um, I recommend having this on because, in general, that's what you want. Uh, but again, it's up to you. So if I put that on again, now I see all the meshes. Now I see all the meshes in object folder. Now I see all the meshes in architecture folder, etc. So this is the asset we're trying to import. This is the FX right here. Um, okay, let me create a new folder for this. Uh, assets. Cry ball. All right, let me turn off the filter and let me find the asset again. All right, there you go. 
you might see uh, some error messages. It's currently like kind of noisy because by default it tries to import everything. Uh, there's like skins and uh, animations and I kind of cannot find anything for this model, but that's fine. Also, I'm not going to show it, show it to you. Um, and that's pretty much the, the import process. So you can just drag it into the asset browser and then in, into the scene. It's actually a pretty nice model, but what you see here is only the uh, proxy mesh. So um, after you imported it, you want to set the uh, material settings, uh, like physicalization. So what you do is you double click on the asset, and each asset type is supposed to have like an uh, uh, editor for this asset type. Uh, in this example, the mesh importer opened. And what you can do is just, you click on a proxy and you change its uh, phys physicalization setting, which is essentially uh, the same dialog you see in your Max exporter. Uh, you set it to no draw. It recompiles. You save, and that's it. Also, you notice it has a few nodes, and uh, LODs are already set up because um, in this setup, the, uh, the nodes are named according to the naming convention we have. So it automatically detects the lots, um, but you can override it by hand if you want. All right, that's it. That's the static mesh import. Uh, what I'm going to show you next is uh, FBX import for characters. Let me cre let me create another folder for this. Uh, cow. It's gonna be a cow. Also, uh, I don't know, I call it kettle all the time, but Sam corrected me, it's not called kettle. Well, I'm not a native English speaker, so it seems to me that a kettle is not one cow. OK. Um, in this case, I tracked and dropped the FBX file, and it creates a lot of uh, assets. So have a look at this. This FBM folder is created by, by the um, FBX SDK and contains all the embedded assets, which in this case are um, textures. Can I have a preview? Yes. Yes. All right. So there are a few textures. Um, it also created like an animation, a material, a mesh, a skeleton, and a skin mesh. And because it found all these things, it created like the entire character definition. And I don't know. You really appreciate this when you ever try to create like a character from scratch with the traditional like um, Max and Maya pipeline. Um, all right, let, let, let me put it in the scene. Um, I create a basic anim object for this. So there you go. Uh, let me overwrite the model, which is the cow. In the future, there's also going to be an asset browser. No, that's not it. This is that's the cow. And let me override the animation. All right, there you go. <coughs> wait, wait, let, let me rotate it. I don't know. And I don't know. If you want to change anything about the setup, add animations, add skeletons, uh, cha change the skeleton, whatever, you can do it in a character too. I think the, the main takeaway here is that uh, all the setup in the character tool, everything was done automatically <clears throat> just by drag and dropping the FBX file. So it's a, it's a 10 second character setup instead of before having to set up you know five different files, uh, exporting them all, waiting for them to be built, setting up everything in the character tool. Now everything is done automatically. I mean, ideally, you would drag and drop something, and you would see like some result, and then you can iterate on this. Yeah, that's my desktop. So let, let me select all of them. Also, wh what I'm going to do is I hold down Control. So it gives me like this additional dialog of what I want to import. And when I, went, when I, went to, when I want to import all the FBX files with the same setting, which are uh, uh, three FBX file right now, I can just hit Import R. Obviously, once the, once the asset is imported, um, if you make a modification to the source file, in this case, the FBX, it will detect that a modification has been made and it will reload the assets. 